introduce to you the Blake family. Prescott Blake is our, our celebrity. And he is here with his son Brad Blake and his wife Jane. This is a little bit about where you grew up. Prescott, tell us about this place. Tell them where your house was. I think that house is still in Durango. Still there. Right, it's an Island Cove trailer park near the base of Chapman Hill. And it's still there today. And uh, that's what it looks like now. Yeah, Used to ski over there? Across the road from Chapman Hill. Yeah. And those were the old ski jumps that were there. Yeah. Had a lot of fun growing up out there. And all my brothers and sisters were fairly good in school. And I'm right. So much. I'll just I'll just mention a couple. Of my uh, uh, my dad's uh, siblings. Some of them are here tonight. Uh, his uh, oldest brother Albert passed away when he was very young. Uh, but my aunt Peggy, who is married to him, is here tonight with her son Paul and his wife. And I really appreciate them coming. His brothers Stan and Jackson are here tonight, and uh, their son David. Her, I mean, I'm sorry. And the uh, and his youngest brother Martin and his sister uh, Catherine are here, uh, and uh, they were kind enough to come to town. All right, thank you for being here. Well, Talking about that picture, of you and, is that your sister? Alice. Right? That was taken out on Third Avenue between the uh, between Third Avenue and the ski area. Well, you were a plumber by trade, right? This is the only plumbing shop I could find in all the photos. You know, you gotta remember, they didn't have Instagram, Facebook, and mobile phones, so the photos are precious, few and far between. Give us a little hint of what this was about in your career. I think that's construction at dorms at Fort Lewis College. I worked on the administration building. Uh-huh. And put in two dorms. Okay, well, he was the first two college buildings built up there. That's, okay, that's amazing. And uh, now that wasn't the only job you had. I found these interesting pictures. Tell us about this. This is something I don't think most people know about. Well, this was a long time ago. And we were surveying for a dam location on the Animus. And there was a cabin at Teft Burr between there and Silverton. And the survey crew lived in that cabin. In the morning, we'd get up and walk down the tracks towards town as far as we could. And then we'd catch the train clear to the upper end of the job and survey all day back down towards our camp. When the train came by, We'd flag them down, and they'd haul us back to our cabin. Wow. How, how long did you live up there? All of one summer I did. Okay. I don't know if they used it the next year or not. Yeah. And, and, what, and the, the plan was actually to tell us what the, what the actual, what their thought was. Well, I believe the thought at that time was to build a big dam, and yeah. which it wasn't going to work out because of so many people that it was going to affect, I think. But uh, they scrubbed that, and that's why they built it on down where Navajo is now. This, this was actually the, uh, some of the first uh, surveys for the Animus La Plata project. Prescott's told me that he worked mostly so he could have a lot of fun, and I'm pretty sure he was really successful at having fun, and this is one of the pictures that, <laughs> that we found. Tell us about this, Prescott. Where, where is this, and what is this? Well, the top picture with all the cars in the dust. <laughs> there was a racetrack for stock cars. And where was it? Junction Creek. Oh, yeah? And that was a good Sunday afternoon pastime oh, yeah? for quite a few of the local boys. Okay. What, what uh, so you were telling me a story about what happened when they tipped over or crashed? They weren't you, weren't you the one that told me they would just push the car back up and let it oh, keep racing? A lot of times they just tip them up by hand. Okay. There wasn't much car there. Yeah. They were all stripped. Yeah. To line them up so they'd run faster okay. on the tracks. So. 
I noticed that one guy is wearing a safety helmet. Is it right down there? Is that the lower picture there? Yeah. Hard so hat. It looks like a hard it's hat. It's a hard hat. Oh, it is? Okay. Well, I don't know. Good to know you took lots of safety precautions and all your fun, <laughs> Prescott. I'm sort of amazed you're here today, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> Tell us it's about a, this one. The, the bike and the lady. Motorcycle. Well, that's a Triumph motorcycle. That's me in the back, and that's a gal that came home with a sister-in-law and my brother from back east. Okay. And I do not know where she is nowadays. <laughs> well, that's a good so. thing. <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> well, we're not blaming you. <laughs> okay. And this, this is one. this is a picture of a thousand stories, I'm sure. There's a whole bunch of stories in those guys. Yeah. So, so my dad's one of my dad's favorite pastimes, hunting, and uh, did it uh, most all of his life. And actually, uh, one of the gentlemen in the picture, uh, Don Bechtel and his wife Virginia, are here tonight too. The one with the bandaid on his nose. Oh, the bandaid on his nose. How'd that happen? How'd you that want happen? Me to tell him. Yeah, tell him. Tell him how that well, happened. Well, the day we were going to leave town and go to hunting camp. He worked road construction, and he was cranking, I believe, a water pump. And the crank, when it started, came off, and it was spinning around. And of course, he had in his hand, and the next thing you know, it whacked him alongside the nose. <laughs> so, We've got it in black and white yeah. proof right there. <laughs> he went to hunting camp. But we went ahead and had a good time at hunting yeah. camp. So, uh, you know, and I've seen I've seen your cowboy hats, your hard hats. You're wearing a French beret in that picture. How did that come about? Isn't that you in the French beret? Yeah. We used to ride motorcycles, and for a long time that was our fad. Oh, okay. It's very stylish. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to bring that back and and notice on his belt that that's not a purse that's a that's a clip for bullets okay <laughs> and, and when you wear a hat like that you need it <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> well these are some photos from hunting camp that i found you got any good hunting camp stories there prescott well i've been in a couple of them that you can tell uh, us? We've harvested a few elk. Okay. And uh, camped in some pretty cold weather. Where was your camp? It was up at the end of Deep Creek on Lightner. And uh, it can get pretty nasty in there. Okay. What about cooking? You were always cooking dinner and breakfast. And Somebody dinner. had to cook it. <laughs> I'll just mention that uh, some of the greatest memories that I have too are hunting with my dad and his good friend Pat Kelly who was a hunting buddy and his wife Cindy are here tonight and uh, they'll they'll tell you the same uh, uh, incredible stories of snowfalls. One year it snowed four feet at hunting camp and that was really hard to get out. Wow. Was that last winter? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not really. Okay. Uh, Okay, well, let's see what else we got on tap here. Now, this is a device that uh, it looks like a wheelchair sure. with a bicycle wheel on it. What, what's going on there, Prescott? Well, that's a deer cart. It's got two bicycle wheels in the middle and then a stretcher form-like thing with handles on the ends, as you can see. And... Uh, I've had as much as two elk on the one I own wow. at one time because it was all downhill to camp. Okay. And I did not want to come back up there. Okay. <laughs> he, he, he actually, uh, the, guy, the guy in front usually has the worst of it because he's got uh, the, all the downhill pressure. That's our brakes. Yeah. He's actually lost the, the heels on his boots trying to break, uh, do be the brakes. So, 
Okay. Well, I guess if the elk kills you, that's just justice. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but, this but, is, but then you're not elk hunting here. What's going on here? This isn't elk fishing hunting, trip. is it? Dad. It's oh, your dad. Talk about your fishing trip. This is a fishing trip. This is my father on the right and a younger brother, Martin, Martin, Martin and myself. And where were you? We could start, good. they turned us loose at Hermosa Park. And we had our bedrolls and camping gear on this deer cart that I doubled over as an elk cart. And uh, we came all the way through from Hermosa Park down to 160 on the highway. Oh, wow. It's okay. Is there any whiskey in that cart by any chance? <laughs> no, I'll guarantee you there wasn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what we got next here. Oh, tell us about this woman. That's Brad's mom, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that was the love of my life for many years. And uh, we did divorce, but she died of mesothelioma. Oh, okay. And her dad was a five-pack-a-day cigarette man. But none of us in our family smoked. And what's the two, the, where are the two ladies there? So Pardon? Over here, Dad. That's at the falls up. Bear Creek Falls. Going, by your ray. Going between Silverton and your ray, yeah. Is that Darla? This is Darla is on, yeah. the, on, in the middle. And then we believe that this is my... Aunt Jackson, who's here tonight, too, uh, standing there. We have, we've had several Fiesta Parade. What do you remember about the Fiesta Parades, Prescott? I don't know what Fiesta Parade. This one here? Yeah. This Any one. of them. I, I do not know, because uh, I probably wasn't really too much into Fiesta Parades. <laughs> Now, rehearsal, you he, told me that was went, the coolest thing in Durango. <laughs> it was he the went biggest, and he took the pictures every year. The biggest parade. Uh -huh. It was always a huge parade. Uh -huh. Remember, you were saying the story? Uh -huh. That it's... <laughs> they don't have parades like this anymore. And it was... No, they don't. Now, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> back in the day, the Fiesta Parade was a Saturday and a Sunday, and it was just... It was like as big as the Snowdown Parade is now. That's the baseball team, isn't that the it? Baseball? Yep, all the baseball players. And right up here in the in the middle is the Turner Savings and Loan or Industrial Bank. Yeah, that was my granddad's place. Yep. My great grandfather's place. Right on Main Street. Well we got one more here. This one's near and dear to my heart, especially the second picture. Tell tell us tell us about what used to be in the in the Fiesta Parades, Prescott. The pooper scooper. Well, I don't know what I called it. You called it a pooper scooper. Well, a pooper scooper, I don't know. It was, could have been anything that day, according to the mood I was in. Yeah. Well, just tell us what it rhymed with. <laughs> okay. So it it went behind the horses, right? Uh. And I don't know what it did. <laughs> okay, you do too. It didn't okay. do anything unless two or three guys pushed it and shoveled. Okay, well, I know you're a motorhead. Tell us about this image here of, you, of your Jeep. That's just a little Jeep road. Went up the hill across from our house. My brother had been off to the military. He came home and we took it for a little drive up there. His uh, brother Stan, who's here, uh, was home from Korea. Yes. And no, where, where is that? Junction, Junction Creek. Junction Creek. Okay, so that's the Junction Creek. And for I, just to sh give you guys an idea of where that area is, I took a photo from Fort Lewis Hill the other day, and so you can see that point of rock, so you can see they're way up there. And that was back in the 50s, wasn't it? Yep. Is that when that yes. was? Yes. Okay. Okay, there's got to be some stories behind this, because when I opened it up, it looks really safe. <laughs> yeah. I notice you're wearing a life jacket. <laughs> you don't have your hat on either. That's when it's. He just came charging or running the boat. You you found that. Came boat. in at high speeds, pulled the throttle off, and that's a boat with no throttle. The engine is not running. T oh. t tell us. And it's stopping it. Okay, tell us where you got that boat. 
found it in a cow pasture. <laughs> and? It had a hole about as big as a pie pan in the bottom. And I went and asked the old rancher if he cared if I took that boat. And this is it floating in the top photograph. And uh, we had many an hour fun with it. And, and tell us, what, where, where is that lake? Um, Mormon Reservoir. Mormon Reservoir. Which is that on Southern. the dry side. On yeah, the, on the Little Plata. Plata. Okay. Red Mesa, yep. Okay, I know you like boats. This is two really exciting adventures. This just goes into the Colorado, my dad. My dad had run the Colorado River in the 19, what, 23? Yeah, 22 or 23. 22, 23, yeah. yeah. Like Survey of the Grand Canyon of the Colorado. Okay, and t tell us about the trip you took from Green River to Moab. This one, yeah. this one. Went from, uh, I don't know whether it's Green River or Moab, but one or the both. Yeah. To Needles, California. Okay. Oh, that was he your did. dad. Yeah. And that was my dad. Ran this boat, which he was the power to it. All right. A little closer. So, he had quite an experience. Lived it up all the rest of his life. And totally enjoyed it. All right. Well, that was he made history. That's for sure. But this top photo, this top photo, if I remember right, this is one, when you used to take a motorboat from Green River, Utah, down to the confluence of the Green and the Colorado, right? Yes. And then what back happened? Back up. Back up to Moab. 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 Yeah. 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 Wow. What, that must have been a crazy adventure. It was just a group of people. Yeah, yeah there would be a great every year. They had a big. And was it all in one day? Kind of a. No, it was an overnighter. It was an overnighter, okay. What's this all about? Right here. Well, somebody had worse luck than I did. <laughs> <laughs> so I took his picture. <laughs> <laughs> but what were you on your way to do when you were doing this, when you took this picture? Going skiing. I was coming skiing from Coal Bank. Okay, well. We, they'd haul us to the top of Coal Bank get our skis, poles, et cetera, and cut across till we hit it was downhill. And we skied down to the lodge, which is Mill Creek Lodge, which is gone now. And uh, go back up. we had one hell of a time skiing. All right. A lot of fun. Don Bechtel that's here is actually in this picture and he was a, a uh, really good ski buddy of my dad's and his wife told me a great story about how she skied down through there once and uh, my dad and Don did two two trips or three trips to her one trip. Okay. So uh, they, they really uh, they really love skiing up there. It was a uh, it I think talking to my dad he just used to love skiing down through there. So I know you got two stories about Violet Smith one of them had to do with your dad, so why don't you start with that story there, Prescott? <laughs> well, my dad had the unfortunate job, or got it, running the Office of Price Administration uh, during the late, I believe, Second World War. Yep. And uh, Violet Smith was running the coal mine out in Eagles, as she usually did. And this lady run off federal marshals, uh, threatened to kill anybody that crossed the line or gate, okay. whatever. And she sounded like she could do it. And I think she would have. But, but uh, remember when she came in to see your dad to get her tires? I'm story. getting to it. <laughs> now, if you want to take over? No, no. I'm ready for a cold one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Violet Smith had a coal mine, and during the war, probably most people sitting here don't even recall rationing 
of sugar, tires, heaven, I don't know what all. And my dad was running this office that let you get the stamps to buy sugar and it's not working. I don't know, maybe coffee. Just a little closer. I, did you hit the? I don't know. It says it's on. Go ahead. Uh, it's on now. <laughs> you don't know. Anyhow, uh, Violet would come in because you had to go in this office. My dad ran for the government and get his signature in order to buy new tires, sugar, I don't know what all, they were a good amount of items that you had to have the office's signature to get them. And Violet Smith came in one day. My dad had a desk at the back of this office. And there were two ladies worked the counter up front. And they come running back and said they were going to quit before they went back and talked to this woman that had come in. <laughs> and so Dad got up and Violet Smith was standing there with her normal disposition showing. <laughs> and. Uh, talking pretty bad. And she started down the counter because she was going to come around that counter and whip my dad. <laughs> and I'd have paid money to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my dad, who was five foot ten, stand and look up a guy that was probably six, two or three and win. 240, and my dad was probably 160. And this old boy got to looking around, and there was an axe handle or a pick handle leaning against a building over there about 20 feet. And uh, this big old kid kept looking over there. And pretty quick, my dad said, leaning right over there. Go pick it up if you think you need it. <laughs> and the whole story changed right there. Dad never had any more problems. Okay. What did he say to How about Violet? Violet? That was the one he oh. told. Oh. oh. <laughs> and how about her son? T tell us the story about with Violet and her son John. Weren't you here at the Diamond Bell one night? Yeah. <laughs> Violet wanted to hear, but her son was. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell, why don't we end the night by filling him in on a little history of the Diamond Bell and John? Uh, well, Johnny, her son, was a coal miner. He was pretty rough and tumble and could handle himself quite well. And uh, one night he bailed off the balcony in the Diamond Bell down to the floor level by the bar and said, I want the biggest, meanest SOB in here. And there's a guy had come in and we'd been sitting up there all the time and we never saw anybody that big come in. <laughs> that, that was one big sucker. He was probably six, two or three, maybe four, pushing 250 or three. And uh, <laughs> old John looked at him, and that old boy looked at him, and John tapped him right on the gut said, take over, I got to go home. <laughs> okay. And that is, that is one of the best stories I've ever heard, and you should hear it in its original form. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Prescott, for, and hey, Brad and Janie for.